off and we were kind of in the middle of using our unit circle, right? So if I have cotangent of pi over 6, cotangent of pi over 6 is the same as the cosine value over the sine value. So it's going to be the x value on our unit circle divided by the y value of our unit circle. So pi over 6 is over here. Remember, that's the one that's over a lot, up a little. So it's root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So if I take the cosine value divided by the sine value, I end up getting what number? Root 3. Do we all see that? Because you can do root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which makes root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. But the fastest way to do it is just to realize that those 2's will cancel. Right? It's like multiplying the entire numerator by 2 and the entire denominator by 2. That's the quickest way to do that. Okay? All right, so the next one I have tangent of pi over 4. So tangent is the sine over the cosine. Okay, pi over 4 is the easy one. Do you guys remember the x and y values for pi over 4? Root 2 over 2. So it's root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. So we end up getting 1. So the next one, cosecant of 3 pi over 2. Well, 3 pi over 2, that's the same as how many degrees? Do you guys remember? 270. It's way, way down here on the bottom. That's the point that's 0, comma, negative 1. Okay, so cosecant is the reciprocal of which one? The sine. So it's going to be 1 over the sine of 3 pi over 2. Well, what's the sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. So what's 1 over negative 1? Negative 1, exactly. What if I've been the secant of 3 pi over 2? I don't know, secant of 3 pi over 2 would be 1 over 0, right? The reciprocal cosine. It'd be undefined. So there might be some answers that are undefined. All right, so tangent of pi over 2. So tangent of pi over 2, tangent of pi over 2 is right here. That's the point 0, comma 1. Tangent is the sine of pi over 2 divided by the cosine of pi over 2. So what is this answer? 1 over 0, which is undefined. So there is no tangent of pi over 2. All right, tangent of 0. What's the tangent of 0? So we have our unit circle. Here's where 0 is. That's the point 1, comma 0. Sine over cosine. What's sine over cosine? 0, 1, which is 0, right? Is this making sense? Are you guys feeling pretty good with these ones? These are what we do all the time. In an AP Calc, we do it every day. I know. All right, so secant of pi over 3, we don't really do it every day, but we do it a lot. <laughs> All right, secant of pi over 3 is going to be, well, secant of pi over 3, that pi over 3 is at 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. Secant is 1 divided by the cosine value. What's our cosine value? 1 half. What's 1 divided by 1 half? 2, right? Because it's 1 um, times 2 over 1, right? Do you guys know the, we always use fractions with pizza. If I have one full pizza and I divide it into half size piece, pieces, how many half size pieces do we have? Two. That's what we're doing. Oh. <laughs> were you guys talking about that recently? <laughs> All right, 13 pi. This is where we use what we call the period. Okay, so 13 pi goes way past one rotation. How many rotations does it go around? How many full rotations? Six. six. And then it's six and a half, right? So it's going to go around six times, and then it's going to end right there. That point is negative 1, comma, 0. So what's the sign of it? Zero. All right, 13 pi over 6, also more than 2 pi. Just a little bit more, though, right? What's the coterminal angle? Where, where is it going to be located? at 30 degrees, or pi over 6, right? So this is going to be over root 3 over 2, comma, up 1 half. So what's the sine value? 1 half, exactly. And then cosine of negative 7 pi over 2. Do you guys remember negative angles go backwards? They don't go counterclockwise, they go clockwise. So if I have 7 pi over 2, that means I go around once. That's 2 pi, negative 2 pi. And I go around, do I go, how many more times do I go? I, I just go around once, right? And then I have 7 over 2. What's 7 over 2 as a decimal? Let's think about it that way. 3.5. So I need a, another 1 and a half pi going in the negative direction. Where's 1 pi? Right here. Where's another half pi? Right there. So we're ending up right here. 
Now, if that makes you uncomfortable, which some of you guys are squirming in your seats right now, if you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot do that, too many fractions, what can we do? We could add 2 pi to it. Everybody try to do that in their, in their heads. Negative 7 pi over 2 plus 2 pi is the same as negative 7 pi over 2 plus 4 pi over 2. Do I need to go bigger? It would still be negative, wouldn't it? So let's add, instead of 2 pi, let's add 4 pi. That would be 8 pi over 2. Does that work for us? Yeah, we get the same as cosine of positive pi over 2. Does that make it better? Do you guys like it when you see it in another form? Yeah, you can use those coterminal angles to help you. You can say, well, if I keep adding 2 pi to make it positive, then it might be a little bit easier. That's why it's at the top. That's the point 0, 0,1, so the cosine value is 0. All right, makes sense? All right, so this last little bit talks about the period. So it says sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi which means their values repeat every time we rotate around the unit circle. So sine of pi over 6 is the same as 13 pi over 6, which is the same as 5 <coughs> pi over 6. I can keep adding 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi, right? And sine of 0, sine of 2 pi, sine of 4 pi, sine of 6 pi, all of those are the same. Okay, so if I give you cosine of 29 pi over 2, I want you to use its coterminal angles. So we're using its period by changing it to a better number. So think about 29 pi over 2. Think about what it is as a decimal. Sometimes that helps. It's 14.5, right? So 14 pi would put us around the unit circle seven times. If I have that extra 0.5 pi, where am I located? Everybody show me with your show me with your hands. So go like this, 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 and this. It's at the top. Does that make sense? Do you guys all see it? So it's going to be right up here. So that point would be 0, 0,1, so cosine of 29 pi over 2 would be 0. Because really this is the same as cosine of pi over 2. That's what we're thinking of. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Let me stop this one and we'll do the next one.